Hi, I'm Claude Larson, and you're looking at my contemplation series. I have two bodies of work in this series because I did it in two different color palettes. The color palettes were selected using very limited paints, so two to three colors plus black and white, and each series started out with the same size paper so I had 11 by 11 sheets of paper that I had applied gesso to and I had 25 pieces for each of the series. Because It's called contemplations because each piece was created one decision at a time. So if I'd paint the whole background I would move on to the next piece and paint that whole background. And I did this layer by layer, decision by decision. So each piece only had one new thing happen to it each time it came across my painting table. And then I would hang it up on this wall behind me, this is my design wall, so that I could stand back, look at it, and contemplate what does this piece need? Does it need a scribble? Does it need a line? Does it need a shape? Does it need me to paint over a certain section or add a pattern? And each decision, one decision at a time, led me to create 50 pieces of art, some of which are in frames, some of which are mounted on cradle panels. Now, the thing about this series is I did use some methods to help me. The first was I would rotate the piece of paper in each direction so that I could see it from all orientations. And although I've selected a way to hang it, it's certainly um, available to anybody who decides to put this on their wall to hang it in any one of the directions because what I was going for in my contemplations was balance. So you could hang it this way, this way, this way, or this way, whichever way most is pleasing to you. The other tool that I used beyond rotating the work is I also used this crop tool so I could look at one quarter of the piece at a time and say Hmm, is there enough interest in this one section of the piece? Is there a reason for somebody to go and look there? Right? Is there something for them to see when they get there? Does it continue to move the eye around? Is there interest? Right? Is there shape? Is there color? Is there variety? Is one corner just like all of the others? So is there too much repetition and not enough variety? So I used this in order to do that. And I also only made one decision at a time. Uh, I'm a big fan of making only one bad decision at a time. Uh, I watch people, you know, make one after another and another, and I've done that in my artwork where I've overworked it. So I thought if I only do one thing at a time, it's easier to reverse if I mess it up, but it's also not overwhelming because I can make one small decision, execute that, and move on. Pick the next piece, make one small decision, execute that, and move on. And slowly but surely, each time I came down to have a painting session, I could spend a few hours of time doing that, um, and I would end up making progress on the whole series. Eventually, the pieces would tell me when they were done. When were they done? They were done when I could move them in any direction, and I liked them in all of those directions. They were done when I could crop every corner and say, yes, there's a reason for you to go and look in this particular corner. Some of them are, have very subtle reasons. I've drawn very light colored dots or a very light scribble or a small piece of collage that I've glazed over so that you can still see what's underneath. But there's a reason for you to go there. And there's a, a decision that you can make. Which orientation do you think it belongs in? I made my choice so that I can present the work to you. However, if you contemplate the work, you can put it in any direction that you choose.